The other day, I got a chance to take a look at the new Galaxy S24 lineup ahead of Samsung's Unpacked event. And here are four things you need to know about these new phones. Starting off easy, let's talk about the design. While Samsung's product ID remains fairly consistent in looking really simple, take a magnifying glass to this year's phones and there are some welcome changes to be had. For example, across the board, Samsung made the screen bezel slimmer, which in my opinion looks particularly amazing on the base S24. On top of the fact that it has the smaller form factor, it's a match made in heaven. However, probably Probably the biggest visual change has to be with the S24 Ultra, which finally sees a flat squared off profile in the front, back, and all around. There are plenty of advantages to this, like for example, you get better palm rejection on the touchscreen. It also enables more usable surface area when using your S Pen. Hell, it'll make installing screen protectors a bit easier and allows for more complete coverage. Plus, in my opinion, it just looks and feels way more premium this way. There might be a slight trade-off in comfort compared to the old rounded design, but that's one that I'm willing to make. Just like a bunch of other companies this year, Samsung has decided to build the S24 with a brand new matte titanium frame. Personally for me, I've been liking how the material feels on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and we'll certainly be doing a comparison between these two phones in a couple of weeks, so subscribe and stay tuned if you're curious. But all this to say, it's been a resilient material against dings and scratches, and I think it should add to the long-term durability of this phone. Which brings me to my next point. I want to talk about Samsung's commitment to software and security updates. Now, the S24 lineup doesn't change all that much in the way of price compared to last year, with the base model starting at 800 bucks and the lineup going all the way up to 1200 plus for the Ultra, at least here in the United States. That said, for a lot of people, smartphones aren't getting any cheaper, and that's a tough pill to swallow. So being able to go as long as possible between physical upgrades is a huge consideration. Looking back to when Samsung launched the S23 last year, they committed to five years of updates, which brings security and major OS upgrades through 2028. It was among the best policies in the business, especially on the Android side of things, which is probably only second to Google's commitment to the Pixel late which is for seven years. And luckily for the S24, Samsung is actually matching that. With these brand new phones, you're going to be getting major OS upgrades and security all the way to October of 2030. I'm gonna be real, this is bordering on overkill, though of course it is welcome. However, it's pretty bold of Samsung to assume that we even make it that long on this planet. At least if the latest developments in AI are any indication of anything. Which is a perfect segue to my next point. That Samsung is leaning incredibly hard on AI for the S24. Yeah, AI is most certainly the buzzword of the year. And it will continue to be an important part of consumer tech for the foreseeable future. However, in the brief amount of time that I've had to spend with the S24, I realize that it might not be as gimmicky as one might assume. And mind you, this is especially especially in the context of Samsung, who are notorious for adding bloat to their phones. Beyond the usual AI optimizations to performance and camera, which typically happens behind the scenes, One UI now has some forward-facing AI features that genuinely feel useful. One of my favorite ones is called Circle to Search. Now it works in any app, but basically you hold down your software home button Circle something on the screen that you want to search up, and One UI will show a pop-up window with a Google search on that subject 
with a bunch of relevant information. For example, maybe you're scrolling through some food pics on Instagram and you want to learn about a particular dish. Well, if you use the circle feature on it, it'll give you the recipes or close by restaurants that serve that particular dish. And you can continue the query by asking specific questions or adding on to the search. And Google will pick up on the context automatically. Now there are a handful of limitations here. For example, you can't just walk up to a person, take their photo, and circle their face and get a bunch of information on them. This is obviously for privacy reasons, so bad actors can't dox other people. However, the system is set up so that it can recognize both famous people and public figures. Otherwise, it's also a hilariously out-of-pocket way to tell Austin Evans that he's irrelevant. That makes sense though, because you kind of circled the jacket a little bit more. Actually, oh, that is literally my exact jacket. Beyond that, One UI also has a bunch of neat AI photo editing tools. This includes Samsung's own version of Google's magic eraser that they have on the Pixel. Though I'ma be real, the machine learning could use a bit more work here. And of course, there's also some AI text augmentation built in to Samsung's default keyboard. This can help make typing up text messages or documents a bit easier by helping you generate sentences. But it can even help change the tone of stuff that you've already typed. You know, in case you're not quite confident in how you're coming across to other people. And for what it's worth, Samsung did mention that a lot of the data gathering and machine learning happens purely on device, in case you're worried about security. Now I'll have to wait and see for just how useful this stuff is once I get my review unit to test out, but on first impression, I'm actually really digging it. Unsurprisingly, the S24 offers a lot of hardware changes this year. For example, the screens are even crazier than last year, offering up to 2,600 nits of peak brightness when in harsh sunlight. They actually had a really helpful demo set up in our press brief to show this off, and while the screen held up fairly well, I must say that it was super difficult to film. Additionally, Samsung is bringing that same 1 to 120 hertz variable refresh rate tech that we saw in the S23 Ultra over to the base S24 and S24 Plus, which among a bunch of other benefits should also increase battery life. But of course, above all else, we have to talk about performance. Here in the good old United States of America, across the board, these new phones are powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy, which should offer about 20% improvement in heavier tasks like gaming when compared to the S23, and something like 98% boost in AI-driven tasks like the features that I mentioned earlier, thanks to a brand new MPU. However, for my international bros out there, y'all might be disappointed to hear that the Exynos cycle is back, at least partially. Outside of North America, the base S24 and S24 Plus will be powered by some sort of Samsung SoC. Now the company does say that it will offer comparable performance to the Snapdragon equivalent, but of course we'll have to wait and see for that. But thankfully the silver lining here is that the S24 Ultra will at least have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in all markets. So if you're upgrading, just keep this in mind. Overall, I'm pretty excited about the S24 lineup this year, where I've gotten pretty used to the minor incremental upgrades year over year out of Samsung. The refinements they made to the physical design, the annual performance bump, and the added functionality from AI that doesn't just feel like fluff is getting me amped to try out these phones here at home. But let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. And otherwise, thanks for watching this video on Denki Channel.